Hi, everyone. How, how are you guys doing today? Awesome. Hi, right, so um, yes, I am going to be doing a talk on uh, comments, communities, things of that nature. Um, moderating communities is what I kind of titled it. Uh, back in my day, the internet was all blah, 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 blah. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Ernie. I am actually a Miami resident uh, for the past four years. Uh, I run the local, uh, I run a local front-end developers meetup here for, uh, for JavaScript and CSS developers. I am also one of the captains of Code for Miami, which is a place where developers, designers, and concerned citizens can build open source software uh, to make the place we live better. Uh, if you're a local Miami and we meet every Monday, uh, to come talk to me afterwards. Um, in a different life, I am currently a software engineer at Rackspace, but in a different life, I did many uh, sorts of things. I worked for Ning, which was in the mid 2000s, um, uh, a website where you can build social networks for anyone. Um, my, my little piece of random trivia is that we helped build a rapper 50 cents social network. I have some great stories about that, but that's probably for a couple drinks. Um, also, I had a now very kind of nascent Tumblr called Little Yellow Different. Um, back in the days, it was a little bit more popular, and I'll, I'll kind of bring that in um, as we kind of talk a little bit more about that. But before we do, um, Let's, let's take a poll. I, I, I want to I understand the, the people that are kind of in this audience. So here's what we're going to do, and this is a total experiment. I have no idea how this will turn out. But what do you think of the statement? All conversations held on the internet are bound to become awful, right? So um, if you guys, have, obviously that is a loaded uh, statement. You can agree or disagree. Um, I'd, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Go to the Go Vote At link um, you, on your uh, laptop or your phone or whatever. Use that code 65103. Um, and, you know, just it, there's, there's going to be like a, a, an opinion scale five for I really agree with that statement. One is that I really disagree. Um, and uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's see where we go from here. Also, while, while you guys are voting, uh, quick show of fans, who here, who here actually um, moderates a website or owns a website of some sort? Quick show of hands. All right, that's like, that's pretty much everyone. That's awesome. Um, who here has, um, let's see, who here has, like, uh, has run a community website for maybe more than um, 100 people? Okay, how about a thousand? Ten thousand. Okay, okay, yeah. Hey, props to the person in the back. Hey, um, cool. So, so obviously, everyone who's here kind of has had some experiences with with web publishing. Um, so, I'm going to make some assumptions, right? I'm going to I'm going to make some assumptions that the the talk that I'm going to uh, that, that I'm going to be giving is is for an audience of people that are going to be building, you know, communities. Um, engaging communities and, and trying to figure this out. I also um, am going to give the caveat and the asterisk that I um, mistakenly thought this was going to be a room small enough to do kind of like a round table to talk, to kind of talk about all our experiences. So what I may or may not do is I may go Oprah style and like have folks come down from the audience, sit from the panel, and then when anyone else wants to like tap in um, or has something, just tap on the shoulder of someone else who's been sitting there and continue it. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll play this one by ear. But uh, I, do have a, I do have a little bit of a, of a spiel. So, All right, so a little bit of votes, 50. Awesome. Good job, guys. So needless to say, 5.7, 5 neither, not really disagreeing, not really agreeing. And of course, you guys know that this is a really, really um, opinionated statement, shall we say, because we all know that, that conversations on the, on the net have, you know, have opportunities to, to, to be right for abuse. I am going to also skip ahead and um, forward and back on my slides a lot, just because that's how my brain works. Um, you know, there's, like, for most of you guys, 
you guys are pretty savvy internet users, so you know about kind of like the law, like the, 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 the greater law of like jerkwad theory and that that word jerkwad is um, obviously censored. Um, where, you know, you, you, this is from a Penny Arcade, which is a local like online um, comic strip. You know, you take uh, an anonymous person, you give them uh, anonymity and a like a high audience and everyone turns outright insane. Um, for those of you guys that are tuned into a lot of um, controversies and, and for, for some of you guys who are community managers, you, you guys are definitely hyper aware of situations like say Gamergate, right? Say like, like the, the, the situation where, where a lot of, you know, women, uh, feminists are, are, you know, have been like doxxed or they've gotten like kind of like like Twitter. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, in the cases of that, that's kind of, they are users and, and content kind of consumers of, of a particular platform. So we'll, we'll, we'll be obviously, it, we'll be taking, you know, those, those things in context, but we'll also be bringing it into what we do as creators. Um, you know, like I am definitely from a time where we did not necessarily have the social medias or the Twitters or, or any of that, right? Like, back in the early 2000s, right, like, these, this was our Facebook. This was, this, these were our blogs, right? Like, web blogs, obviously, thanks to WordPress and through, you know, Blogger and LiveJournal, they were, they were, they were started at a time where not a ton of people were really cognizant about having communities on the web. They, they only heard about it through, like, PBS shows or, like, you know, like, random like shows on access cable or something, right? So when people started, I mean, for me personally, right? When I started my website, Little Yellow Different back in 1999, oh God, that was 17 years ago. Um, it, it, was, it was one of those things where it's like, I had a blog and I was automatically in a community with other people who had a blog because there were only, you know, 50 or 60 of them at the time, right? That, this was, our Facebook, right? This was a Facebook, and this was our and this was our Twitter timeline, right? Because the audience, the, there was a high barrier of entry to create a blog, to design it, and to, to curate it. So the folks that were using it, we 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 meaning the the bloggers in like the early 2000s, just assumed that you were cool, like assumed that that there that there was no malice intended. So. Obviously, a lot of things have happened, you know, not bad, not good, but it, 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 it is, right? Blogs became super, super popular after 9-11, right? And then adding to different types of social medias like MySpace and Facebook and whatnot, you, you, more people kind of come on and, you know, you kind of have the situation you have today, right? Um, who here actually knows the name Derek Pawazek? Show of hands. Okay, one or two. Oh, so Derek Pawazek was kind of is also kind of like in the vein of an old school blogger. Um, this is actually a book from 2003. The book is called Design for Community: The Art of Connecting Real People in Virtual Places. Um, the book has not aged gracefully and has aged very gracefully. And, uh, and let me explain that one. And so the, the, he uses, so basically Derek, Derek Pawazek is an old school blogger. He built these old school um, storytelling sessions called the Fray, uh, Fray Cafe. If you've been to a South by Southwest interactive festival, um, they'll, they still actually hold Fray Cafes, but they're storytelling events and his, that was his, that was his uh, style, right? Like he, he did, he did um, storytelling events and he was all about community and engagement. Great, great book in regards to like how people um, connect on virtual spaces. And a lot of what he still has still kind of stays to this day, right? And this was stuff that was built 13 years ago, right? Uh, which is interesting though, because now he is literally a goat farmer in, in Portland and completely kind of like burnt and you know kind of like it it, it, it was burned out a little bit on the industry and like it, it was interesting because uh, another kind of old school like blogger who's a Neil Dash who was a really popular Twitterer is like wrote this which he realizes that like all the old timers meaning old time bloggers old time folks that are cognizant of community stuff who learn lessons how to build online communities either just quit or work at Slack now and I mean I have I have a theory on why they, they burn out right I think a lot of it is in, and I'm going to go off script a little bit, but in the 
In the chase to get like web clicks, right? Like in the chase to get like readership or whatnot, um, newspapers, like city, city newspapers that don't like moderate their, moderate their comments, they're, they're going to try to get as many readership as possible, right? Um, readers by any means necessary. And if it means, you know, throwing out all the lessons that we've learned on how to be a good, good community um, our, uh, 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 curator out the window, then, then so be it if it means like more clicks. And it's, 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 it's a little bit of a shame and, and you know, there's, there's, there's still things that we can learn to, to kind of be better about things. Um, so kind of as a result of that, he was also, um, and Neil Dash was also kind of uh, like super like cognizant of all the stuff that goes on with Twitter, it's high rates of abuse, um, you know, issues with like Gamergate scandals. He wrote this article kind of directed to, you know, Twitter. Uh, 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 newspaper websites saying like if your website's full of assholes it's it's your fault right and basically what what's what summed up is 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 this right like basically the we've come to a world where well I'll, I'll go back to this one slide where it's like you know if, if you post a, a harmless video of a child's birthday party and, and tre you're treated to profoundly racist non sequiturs in the comments, you can read about a local traffic accident on a newspaper website and see vicious personal attacks on the parties involved, right? And, and he actually writes another article that follows up about this saying, everyone says don't read the comments, but in a way that actually, he actually writes up a very good case argument of saying, saying that don't read the comments is actually perpetuate, perpetuating the system, right? Perpetuating that, 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 you know, well, you know, there's nothing that, that can be done, you know, it, it's just gonna happen, right? And, and what if it didn't, right? So that's kind of, and, and, and with you guys being web creators, we, we all have, you know, we, we, we all have agency and we all have the responsibility to make sure the, the, the community members of the website, or even just a, a good old fashioned website commenter doesn't, you know, derail a, a, a community or, or, or the brand that, you, that, you, that your website has. He makes these kind of basic takeaways, which um, is pretty spot on. Um, he, he uses harsher words, but, but basically it's basically community guidelines and a code of conduct, um, very similar to what you see at like, conferences like WordCamp, right? Um, or, you know, or other organizations, right? He mentions that a human, not a bot, has to be a moderate, moder moderate, ooh, I need to self, uh, I need to spell proof that. Um, a moderator uh, for the community and accountable identities and real names. So this is stuff that has actually been kind of established for, for literally decades now, right? Um, and I, you know, there's, there's actually personal, anecdotes on on what happens when you kind of like take away numbers two and number three uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll skip ahead real quick and I'll, I'll actually do a real personal case study about this so case study one of the other kind of my past lives back in the day was a site I created in the early 2000s called eight Asians eight Asians is a, a, a blog about Asian American awareness it's called eight because I wanted to make it like the view so it was like eight people with like like differing personalities and eight is like a lucky number if you if you're any like interested in feng shui at all so we're trying to be all clever um this was this was the site what it looked like in like 2009. um obviously it was you know when you're talking about asian american politics or race politics in general right like there's there's a high degree of conversations so we tried you know to do our best and like be able to to have, you know, have a, 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 a conversation where, you know, where disagreements were uh, allowed, but, you know, but being able to, like, not, not handle it into, into abusive situations. And it was one of those things where, as the creator of this website, it, 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 I was an editor for maybe four or five years before I ended up stepping down for personal reasons. But it was one of those things where like moderating the comments actually ended up taking more time than writing all like these articles itself, right? But it was worth it because you actually had amazing articles. So fast forward to 20, to 
that should say 2016, but fast forward to 2016, right? And um, ended, I ended up selling my part of the website and um, the, the owner who kind of runs it now is, it has it very much on, on autopilot. And what has happened is stuff like what you see, right? Like basically um, folks, the trolls, it, it, it ended up being trolling. And the, the thing is, is that because there is there, there are bots that automatically take in like inappropriate words, right? But without a human to, to properly curate this, you see stuff like this. And, and then what happens is that you see one terrible, angry, you know, comment, and then it is basically a magnet for all terrible, angry comments, right? So, so I'd, I'd actually like, you know, so in, in, back in the days we had, we did have a commenting policy and this is what we wrote, right? Like we, we wrote that, you know, we, we tried to cover our bases. We knew about the comment policy. We said that, like, for legal purposes, because one of the eight Asians was an attorney, and we're like, oh, okay, we'll trust everything you have to say. You know, it was like, it was, the, the comment policy at the time was thinking that we were just doing things to, to just prevent, li like, for liability's sake, right? Like, obviously, we didn't want to get sued. What if someone said something horrible? You know, in, in hindsight, if I were to go back again, I mean, and this is a valid, this is a valid comment policy, but in, in hindsight, if I were to do this again, I would, I would actually kind of reconsider this first sentence, right? Like all comments with this block are the responsibility of the commenter. Well, they are the responsibility of the commenter legally, but they're your responsibility too, right? Um, they're your responsibility to make sure that you're having um, a, a productive conversation and if, you are not able to have the resources to have a conversation, then maybe you shouldn't be having comments at all. And that, and that is also the kind of the, the mindset of what, what um, Anil was trying to say when he kind of wrote this very angry but very accurate post on why, like, why, why there needs to be more accountability, right? Um, you, you hear all, and, and kind of quick, quick side note with all the abuse stories you may have may not heard of about Twitter and those doxing things, that, that's also why there's also been a lot of criticism towards Twitter lately. Um, because of, you know, because there, there are folks that believe that there are not proper, you know, a lot of, a lot of people are feeling threatened, like for their physical safety and, and, and you know, a lot, of, it's it, like in the fine line that Twitter engineering and business staff uh, try to stand in between, you know, being marketable and having a constructive, you know, pleasant, non-abusive experience, they might, the pendulum might be swinging a particular way that folks might not be happy with. Um, these three, these three, uh, where am I, uh, da, 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 okay. So these three uh, bullet points are pretty accurate um, and they've always kind of been talked about. Um, but there's many kind of ways on, on how, how we can kind of do this, right? Um, Derek, the, the book I was actually talking about earlier, actually adds a couple things further, right? Um, and would love to hear like any kind of like opinions or, or um, conversations or actual extra additional notes that you guys may have. And I might just run up and like hand you guys a mic to, 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 to figure that out and stuff, right? So one of the things that D Derek uh, talks about in the book is basically tying in your community to the real world as much as possible, right? And that, that goes a little bit back to the accountable identities and real names. Um, there might be cases where folks might not have, um, be able to use the real names and that's fine. It, it's not so much getting a name as much as it is the accountability and making sure whatever pseudonym is a regular pseudonym. Right, because what, what we want to do is we want to prevent the idea of someone coming in, dropping in, like spewing a bunch of N-words and then like jumping back out again, right? So it also brings up to like a third point, which is the tougher it is to get someone to contribute, the better the content will be. And this is totally true, right? There are a bunch of WordPress plugins that, that do a little bit of this. Um, I can, you know, I can name, num, name some off. There's like, man, there's Dis Discuss is actually a pretty solid platform. You know, there, there is, because uh, it, it requires registration and it ties it into, you know, Facebook. And for a lot of like, you know, American users at least, Facebook is definitely tied into your personal identity. Um, 
Live Fire is a different one. I haven't used them lately, but they, 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 they also kind of like make sure that you are logged into the system. So there is a, an accountability measure. Um, and, you know, basically ha being able to log in, have like the more steps it takes to actually register yourself as a user and put in that content, the better the content will be. Um, there is actually a great example of this. Again, I'm going to go off script a little bit. Uh, who here's heard of Metafilter? Okay, ah, not, not too many. So Metafilter is also one of those circa early 2000 websites, which um, has kind of become a, a, a stalwart for like, like what, what makes a great community. Um, Matt Howey, the, the originally founder of Metafilter, now actually works at Slack, which kind of triggered the, the, the tweet by Anil saying that everyone who works on community sites has either quit or join Slack. But what, one of the things that, that Metafilter is really good at is that they have really, really um, great, like, you know, conversations, like comparing, and I'm just like doing this off the cuff, right, where, where the, the comments, you know, are a little different from, say, like, like, say, go on YouTube, right, and like the comments there, right? What are, what are some of the ways they do it differently? They have, you know, there is, there is a lot of, there's a lot of things that, that, that we pointed out, like in the slide earlier, right? There are content guidelines. There's, there's ways, you're ex there is a clear rule of how you're expected to act on a community site, right? Um, one week waiting periods, right? That would sound crazy for anyone that is, you know, doing like a pure business site that would require you to take as many time, like, that would want you know your, your click-throughs and user registrations as quickly as possible. But this is great because what happens is that this curates the um, the people coming in to if people really want to join this conversation, they have to work for it. And if someone wants to troll, you know, this post for whatever reason, they can't run in and you know just drop drop in like a, a threat or anything like that, right? They'd have to come in and create the new account. Um, another thing, do they, do they still have the, um, yeah. But so, so basically, I was, uh, the, uh, like a, a lot of websites will also have like consequences, right? Like the, being able to have these guidelines is, is one thing, but actually enforcing them is actually, is, is, is a very kind of relevant thing as well. You know, like being, holding abusers accountable for how they, you know, how, how, how the actions that they've, they've made for other com uh, members of their site. They also have, um, Derek actually has a, a, another really good thing that I, I didn't put on my slide, which was um, for those that actually have uh, a community website to find your power users and to make them um, regular kind of content producers, right? Like that, that sounds a little nefarious, but, but it's just a better way of saying making them community managers or making them, you know, um, kind, of, kind of having like a, a risk or like a, like, a, like a reward system, right? The same way there's like negative feedback for folks that, you know, don't play by the rules, positive feedback for those who do, right? So, jumping back. Do, 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 do. So, I already talked about eight Asians, and this is where I would kind of like, if I had, if this was kind of like a, a kind of a round table, um, where I would kind of be like, so let's, let's talk about like what, what, like the kind of the situations other folks have gone through. So, I, I want to actually still put the question out there to the audience, like what, what are some of the tools that you use, right? Whether, whether it's a plugin, or whether it is a community manager, whether it's a staff, whether it's a combination of the two, um, I'd, I'd love to hear about other folks that, that run communities, um, especially virtual communities, but real life communities is good too. And I'd and, and, and like, love to hear about how other folks kind of moderate or handle um, cases of abuse. Any, is there any brave souls here? All right. Oh, sure, yeah, 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 sure, what's your question?
So are there beneficial ways, so let me get this question right, are there, are there beneficial ways of, of having good community? Let me give you the mic. Has anyone found good ways to uh, hold abusers accountable beyond blocking or marking their stuff as spam, specifically ways that would um, convert them to a good community member as opposed to a, a, a spammer or troll or whatever? blog comments I mean so so for me it's it's like if if a, a it's been my my personal experience has been a combination of technical stuff and um and like like human you know human human curation right so the technical stuff like eight Asians was on was on let's say a wordpress blog and it, uh, you know so i used i used Special things like I'd, I had for I had folks register, you know, register as users. I had folks kind of, you know, make sure that they're tied in with with a real name. You know, towards the end of of Eight Asians, I ended up having them actually tied to their actual Facebook account because people were more likely to were more likely to um, you know write genuine content if they had their name and their face associated with it. That 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 automatically. Took you know some of it some some of of that down. As far as other people marking, I, I do think there is. As far as other people um, that might not be like curators or moderators um, commenting on on commenters, I, uh, abusive comments. I, I honestly think that at least the tools we have now for spam and such that that is kind of the way it's been. Um, I mean, there, there's definitely filters out there, right? Especially like WordPress, right? There's definitely filters that will automatically like flag things for certain for certain words. Um, of course, that only goes so far, which is why you, they're you know having the having the personal uh, curation is imperative, right? Um, yes, you in the you in the. Okay, the question was uh, when when I started Eight Asians, what was the first thing? What was the first topics that started um, <laughs> that started the controversial uh, kind of flame baby stuff? Um, turns out that uh, interracial relationships are a huge kind of deal. Um, yeah, so that was that was kind of like so there was. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So the question was, so is the controversial things is what, what made people, yeah. It, it basically, there are controversial topics that, that riled people up, and then if, if people weren't careful, it, it, would, it would fall into personal tax territory. I mean, I can show you what Eight Asians looks like now, and I'll give you a caveat, is that I do not, um, I do not have a really a much part of Eight Asians nowadays, and I'll kind of explain why. I will also give you a warning if you are offended to sensitive content. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not pornographic or anything, but, but it's, I'll show you what I mean. So what happened was a couple of years ago, we were like, okay, um, as an editor, you were like, how do we bring in web clicks? And someone had the great idea of, you know, going, going the obvious way, right? Of, of, of like, are Asians the smartest race? Like how, how to basically, by the way, how having, Questions as blog titles is the number one way to get away with like the most slanderous things ever Because you're gonna be like Are Asians the best race and then, like the answer is like no, but but because you have it in the form of a question It's totally valid and people will click on it, right? So I Fully admit to being part of this terrible terrible problem, right? And, 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 again, and again, it goes into that conf that that conflict that we have as web producers to make sure that people read it, but people like, but making sure that the people that comment about it are, you know, not terrible, right? So the way, so the question is, is like, would, would I go on Discus and start other other things on your own? We did try that. We did try going on to like, say, Metafilter and other like comments and posting as like eight Asians. Um, for us, what ended up getting, 
we took the long tail route. We did, it was literally five years of kind of word of mouth. Um, and then this was the benefit and the curse, right? Because then we started being like, well, BuzzFeed and you know, other sites are having these kind of like salacious titles. Why don't we do this? And, and you know, it, it's so easy to take that cookie and, and take it all the way, to, you know, and, and why, why are Asians yellow? I mean, really, come on now, right? But, but so, so on the one hand, it's like we, the, the Google traffic fed to it, you know, and then on the other hand, it was like, it fed to it, but the wrong people started coming in, right? So that was, that was our, I think that was our downfall, right? But it was weird, right? Because we were also wanting to make this like a, a profitable site. At, th at that point, this is when I was doing Asians, Aid Asians as like my, my, my primary part-time job. And I mean, my primary hobby. And um, you know, it, it was, it was, if I were to do it again, you know, I, I think, I think I would, I would definitely find in-person groups, right? Like, like, you know, there's a lot more Asian Americans in California. One of the reasons why I kind of ended up selling the site to someone else was because like, I'm in Miami, there's like four Asians here, right? So, so I, I moved, you know, so, but if, if I were to do this again and get the proper cultivated audience, I would probably go to like the Asian American Film Festival in Los Angeles, right? I'd probably go to the Japanese, but basically tying it into like in-person things, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, why don't you repeat that? Thank you. Oh, my solution for comments was to turn them off. I had a, a kind of a lighthearted site. It's a city site where uh, it was tourism, and I wanted to keep it light. I had comments on there, but there's restaurants. People started slamming a couple restaurants. People started uh, making comments about the city. I loved having the quantity of people because it did incite uh, conversation and everything like that about the city but then I had to curate too much. Uh, and I did have to shut off comments where people then emailed me and said, what kind of site is this? You're gonna shut off comments, where's, where's my liberty? Where's my, uh, and so I just turned everything off. What I'm, the takeaway that I get from here is that if I do want to have a forum on there, that it's, it's gonna be quality based where I have people quantify themselves over quantity where I'm getting anybody right. can anonymously do that a and I think then I can probably have them curate themselves at that point, it, or it'll, it'll filter things out as to go into a bot and have that do it. But uh, I think that quantity is, is a good clue. I literally could not have said that better myself, so thank you for that. Yeah, so um, I think we are at the three minute mark, so, so I think we're just about, Nizar, wanna, wanna do some closing thoughts like Maury? <laughs> uh, I, just, I just have another question. This, this is another interesting thing that you, may, that you might wanna uh, think about. It's just that I, I often, I, I, I have a, a dark sense of humor, so sometimes I, I say things inappropriately without intending to. And so I, with me, I would be concerned about, about how, you know, when I'm, when I'm responding to these comments, like saying, saying the wrong thing. Right. And so on, on, on a similar thing, uh, I would, I've been wondering just like, what, to get an example of what a, a good code of conduct would be, what would be like your top three things on there? That's a, that's a great one, and uh, I mean, guess I'll be super quick, but I, a, a lot of it uh, depends on context, right? So with a, with a site like 8 Asians, which is totally informal, it, like we, we literally had, um, at one point, had a YouTube video, and I don't know if I have time to link it. Uh, uh, let's see. I don't. Don't be uh, yeah, I know. Sorry. Um, is it is it there? Yeah. I, okay. I have literally linked that as my comment policy, and I've been like, "There you go." Right? Like, like, and then of course, obviously, if you're running a business. You know, you, you probably want some actual, you know, content. You probably want to write that popular. But, but you can go, you can, you can phrase it in the style that, that you're, you're building for, right? Like, you can, you can say it totally informally. Like, listen, the fact that you have them is just as important. And the fact that you're going to be, you know, that, that you're going to enforce them. 
Those, those are the two biggest things right there, right? You can, the way you phrase it, you know, you, that depends on like the, the tone of the site, right? The context, so that, 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 yeah. All right, guys, uh, that's about it for me. If you guys want, that's my Twitter. Thanks, guys.